So, tell me something funny about me. One of the funniest things, hands down, about being married to you and you're from Sweden, your studious cleanliness, your whole and clean Swedish concept that everything has to be spick and span. Everything in Sweden is really clean. Everyone's houses, there's a lot of pride there and the way people dress themselves and put themselves together. The hygiene level is <laughs> maxed out over there. And that might not be strange for most people. But it is when you're from New Zealand because people, <laughs> like I was saying before to Saga, like you can go into a supermarket without shoes on. That's just normal. And dust, <laughs> dust and not throwing away old things. That's all pretty normal here. All the houses in Sweden are insulated and they're very warm. You expected coming to Sweden and being cold inside? Yeah, I was really confused that you could be warm inside <laughs> in winter because our houses are much more makeshift and well, we don't, we've got more insulation standards. You kind of expect to go inside and put on jerseys <laughs> and jackets to keep yourself warm because insulating the house costs too much. Another incredibly shocking thing or hilarious thing about Swedish people and that we still haven't gotten over in our relationship is Saga experiences very real sun anxiety. So if it's a warm sunny day and this is the same in Sweden, you walk out and people will just stand there and bake themselves lightly in the sun because that sun's going away and it's not going to come back for a long amount of time and you're all very cold. Whereas in New Zealand, it's warm and sunny at least six months of the year. And it's sunny basically. It's quite sunny year round and the sun doesn't go down, you know, at three o'clock. You can waste a few sunny days. You can stay inside all day and do work or play on the computer, some video games. And that's fine in New Zealand. But every day it's sunny, Saga drags us outside and I'm like, why? It's going to be sunny tomorrow <laughs> and the next day. We're not in Sweden anymore. I'm there ready. was this brilliant moment when Saga first met my parents and my parents went to hug her because in New Zealand... I can't remember this. Of course no. you can remember no. that. Oh my gosh. So in New Zealand you can hug people when you greet them. You definitely do that with family and you definitely extend that <laughs> to your <laughs> your children's spouse. And both my parents came in, they swarmed her and they hugged her. And then Saga, <laughs> the Saga stepped back and went, oh, so you guys are huggers. <laughs> Which is hilarious, because apparently in your country that's... We don't really hug that much. Have you hugged my family? Once? Yeah, and it was awkward actually. Another confronting thing <laughs> when you go to Sweden, from my point of view, is how well people are dressed. There's a real kind of status game in there. Which, you know, isn't that, you know, maybe we should dress up more. And in New Zealand, people have taken that a step oh. further. And people will, like go out in like a shirt with holes in it. Like it's super relaxed. Whereas if you did that in Sweden, people would think you were, I'd gone insane. Yeah, you can go into a supermarket in New Zealand without shoes on. And New Zealand prides itself for, for being clean and green. But a few people will litter and smoke a lot on the streets and just chuck their cigarettes out. I don't experience that in Sweden. Um, we don't smoke nearly as much. I mean, his entire mm. family. Everyone smokes. Yeah. I smokers. Not me, but yeah. But um, I didn't have a single person in my family who smoked. The pride for looking after things seems to be a bit lower. Like, we like to think that we are, but people would litter in forests and parks too yeah, if yeah. they've got plastic. Not all the time, but you definitely see it happen and it doesn't happen in your country, it doesn't feel like. Not as often, I don't think it's here. One of my favourite things about being married to Saga unequivocally is her access to SVT Play, which is your government channel which seems to produce really uh, inspiring journalism. We have like a governmentally owned TV channel so they, they're not allowed to endorse any brands or have any commercial breaks. It's just a bit more neutral and it's a bit less like, what's that called? Like excitement driven? Or like, you know yeah, that we're word? chasing the reactionary kind of clickbait. The thing is coming from New Zealand you meet people from different countries and English is their second language but it really is their second language. It's quite broken, it's not fluent. When I met Saga, her English was so fluent, I was like, ah, oh, so it's like your second language, but you've got two languages of Sweden. That's not the case when you go to Sweden, the English is quite broken, it's really a second language. So that was very surprising. And my family, some of them don't really speak English. My dad really doesn't like speaking English, so they have exchanged maybe 30 words. We haven't spoken a lot, yeah. But my granddad speaks a lot of English, my sister speaks a lot of English, but 
Most people are also very self-conscious speaking English unless they're drunk. It makes it very difficult because Swedish people are so scared they're doing it wrong. Mm. So they just won't speak to you. I think the most honest thing I can say is that Sweden has more of an emphasis on gender equality and because I'm with you, our relationship is more equal than if you weren't from Sweden. Surprisingly equal for some people. But mainly when you defy people's expectations. When we were working on the van, people assumed in New Zealand that it's me doing all the work because it's a manly thing to do. But it was all saga. You, you did something. Sweden also is like really scientific too. Before you move on anything, you seem to want to do the tests. In New Zealand we can get a bit of agendas in there and hype and like the concern drives policy. I mean, you guys will get free education too, so intellectuality and thinking through things is really a high value. Oh, the most shocking thing about Swedish culture is that you don't have condensation on your windows. In New Zealand, you have condensation. And mold. Every morning you wake up, yeah, condensation and mold pretty much in every house. <laughs> Yeah. You gotta wipe your windows. And yeah, you gotta squeegee your windows in the morning. And for some reason, no one, everyone refuses to buy a dehumidifier. Oh, I think it's all been covered. This is supposed to be a fun video. I don't know if it's that fun. I hope so. I really enjoyed this. That's good. So thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah. We're very relaxed like that. <laughs> More dirt. <laughs> a little bit of both. And he's an actor, so he should know. Yeah. If anyone gets upset. Sweden's a lot like New Zealand. Instead of cows, they've got lots of grain. <laughs> he only went to south of Sweden. That's a good one, Annie. Yeah, that's real. There's not something else. I enjoy the conversation. When that's you edit these things and you cut them down, they end up looking great anyway, so you got to go out strong. Okay. Let's not let them know our doubt. <laughs> well, yeah, so as you can tell, my husband is equally strange as I am, I was going to say. Yeah, we have different working methods. <laughs>